his right upon his wife is that she does not leave the house without his permission or approval. Now, does this have to be like every single time I need like a written thing or you do like a tardy pass, that kind of stuff? If it's an understood thing, like the husband is okay with it. She knows that he's okay with it. They have a mutual understanding. She can go out. It's what this is talking about is if he doesn't want her to go out, now she needs to go and ask him if he doesn't want it. If he's fine with it, she doesn't have to ask every time. So it, it's not so strict. This is These are like when they're arguing or if they're like about to go to court, and he's like, I don't want you to leave the house at this time. And then she goes out. Then she's done something against the, the nikah contract. Number two, like we mentioned, not let anyone who the husband dislikes into the home, even if it is her direct family. Uh, she can still visit them, however. So this is in juxtaposition with her right that she can go visit her parents if she needs to. Right? So he can you know, prevent them from coming in, but he can't prevent her from going to see them if he's going to do that. So he has a choice. Either your wife can uh, see her parents in your home or you can't stop her from visiting her parents. And we'll talk about how much, how often. To protect the wealth of the husband so she can't be frivolous in spending too much. Necessities, of course, she can spend. She's basically... You know, she can guard all of his wealth. Uh, she's a guard for his wealth. And whatever she makes, like I mentioned, it's all hers. He has no right over what she makes if, he's, if they're going to agree on that. To be available for intimacy. So if the husband is feeling that, you know, he, he wants to have intimacy, then she has to be available for that. If she's sick, if she's like, you know, she has a headache or something like that, then he has to respect that as well. So sickness is, an, is a valid excuse. So this is with the caveat of a valid excuse. Also menstruation, it's haram at that time. It is haram to have intimacy when the woman is menstruating. Right? So there are certain caveats. We're not mentioning all of the rules. Here. And to be given inheritance at the demise of his wife. That's his right. You cannot prevent the husband from that right. And that's it. Right? There might be one or two more in terms of details. Note, a wife does not need to cook, clean, nurse their child, live in the same home as the parents, or take care of the in-laws and, and many other things. She doesn't have to do any of that. If she does, it should be uh, appreciated. It should be considered grace from her. It should be considered a favor. And so all of this has to be appreciated. And continuously say thank you and all of this stuff. Here's a hadith. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says, fear Allah regarding your wives. So have taqwa because no one is going to stop you. If you want to do oppression to your wife, no one's there to stop you. So fear Allah. If you have taqwa, and that's why that is the number one thing that you should be looking for, sisters, a brother with taqwa. He fears Allah, he's going to fear because he knows that he has to answer. For you have married them with the permission and safety of Allah. Allah gave you that capability to marry your wives. And you have made intimacy with them halal through the word of Allah. This is through Quran. Allah allows you to get married to them. Intimacy is now halal. So fear Allah. You got all these ni'mas and blessings. Don't oppress. Your right upon them is that they do not let anyone you dislike to be a guest at your home. In the words of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you don't like someone, they're not allowed. Another hadith. It is impermissible for a woman who believes in Allah that she allows a person her husband dislikes into his home. So that's that, right? Neither can she leave the home if he dislikes that. If he's okay with it, that's fine. You don't have to ask every single time if you know that there's no problem. Neither can she leave the home if he dislikes that. She should not obey others over her husband. So for, we're going to do this hadith later on. Who do we need to obey the most? Allah. And then after Allah? Rasulullah. Then after Rasulullah, uh, parents. Parents. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانِ He mentions that right after uh, believing in Allah. Do good to your parents is number two. That is not for everyone. That is for males. When a woman gets married, her husband supersedes her father and her mother. He is number one after Allah and Rasulullah She should not obey others over her husband, not even father or mother. In halal affairs and stuff like that, of course, if he's trying to get you to do haram, 
you don't have to listen. That's Allah and Rasulullah. They're number one. Nor should she leave his bedside or hit him. Unfortunately, this is a phenomenon that's becoming more and more common. Spousal abuse from the, the wife. And they'll like hit their husbands and stuff like that. And they, they're banking on the fact that he will not hit back. I've actually seen like a portion of a documentary on this. More and more common. The women are hitting their husbands and betting that they're not going to hit them. And then when the police come, they're on the side of the woman. And the man never hits. That's of course not all the time. So these are some ahadith in that regard. <laughs>